Hello and welcome to the Possibility Partner Show. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, your Chief Possibility Officer and partner. And I love sharing Andy Licious advice with entrepreneurial adventurers. But today is a very special day. It's December 21st, 2015. And I felt really called to focus on the winter solstice this year. And you can see I have a wonderful, delicious guest by my side here in the screen. And we'll get to Christari in just a second. I want to thank all of you folks who have shown up live. Oh my gosh, mwah, mwah, mwah. you who waving mwah, kisses. Thank you for bringing your delicious energy. And then for those of you who are watching the replay, ah, we are so honored you've tuned in to this show. It's a very special, not just a celebration of the holidays or just you know winter solstice, which is a very powerful time, but it's also a celebration of uncovering our voices. And my guest today will go deeper into that as we move through the show. I invite anyone to please stay tuned into the Possibility Partner Show by subscribing to my YouTube channel, Andy Licious Advice. And I love social media and I love hearing about how you're doing and how you're glowing in the world. So please connect with me. I'm on all the platforms, but those who know me well know that I love to hang out at the Twitter bar. <laughs> That's my favorite joint on uh, the social media platform. So please reach out. I'd love to connect and find out what's going on in your world. Now, we have this wonderful time where we're gathering tonight. In fact, here on the East Coast, in the Northeast, where my guest and I are from, the, so the winter solstice is beginning right now. We're going to move into sunset in, a, in about 20 minutes. And we're going to talk a lot about why this is a wonderful time to get clear and let go of the past and bring in the new and have renewed feelings by bringing out more of your inner light for all to see. Hmm. And with that said, we have such a vibrant guest with us today. Very exciting. You can see her glowing, gorgeous goddess. I, I think she even looks like Adele self there. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> and Christaria is known for activating and opening hearts through her powerful voice, singing, writing, teaching, and coaching. And she empowers each of us to uncover and remember who we truly are, an authentic, joy-filled, fulfilling life that we can create by going deeper into who we are. Please join me in welcoming Christaria. Thank you for joining us, Christaria. It's my deep pleasure. Thank you. Oh, and I, I just want to say a quick shout out to all our folks who are watching live. We have so many great people. Kamut, thank you from hashtag Spirit Chat. So happy to see you here, as well as Talk to Me Guy, the goddesses who founded the Wellness Universe, Anna and Sherry. Thank you for being here. And Alice Badler and Walter and Laura Verrilli and Dan Forbes. So honored to have you all here watching live. We have a very special, very special show and a very special guest today. But before we dive into the content, I'd love for Christaria to share her background with you because it, she hasn't always been helping people with her beautiful <laughs> voice. And it, I always love finding out people's different paths to where they are today, as well as finding out where they're going to glow going forward. So share your background with us. Most of your career, you've been like a background singer in, in all that you've done, you know, really focusing and promoting others all the time and enhancing them, making sure the spotlight's shown on them. You said making yourself number two and tucking behind everyone in a conversation you and I had. So share with folks what you were doing before you really stepped into the spotlight yourself. Mm, that is so wonderful. And I also want to thank everyone. Uh, Andy, all of your peeps are just beautiful. They've been so welcoming to me here and on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I'm really delighted to now be part of your community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the journey here was, is, uh, you know, twisted and, and has a lot of drama to it. We'll skip the drama because it's kind of a waste of time. But I spent a lot of time in drama growing up. And uh, partially that's because it's one of my gifts. 
and Bravo. partially <laughs> partially because it was a way to avoid uh, some of the pains of um, growing up. And we all endure that. That's just part of being human. But I've had throughout my life this incredible dance with my voice. And it, it extends beyond the singing voice. Uh, I am powerful. I am very bright. I am very big, both, you know, physically and energetically. And that is not always good news for people. And so a lot of my life growing up, I would, I'd have these alternating experiences of being built up and torn down and built up and torn down. And right around when I got to be in college, I, I came to the conclusion that I felt like I was a lightning rod. <laughs> And that people felt very passionately about me, either very positively or very negatively. But I tended not to evoke vanilla in anyone. <laughs> so a so yeah, so uh, so I have had a, a stops and starts with the singing over many years. And when there were times of pain around the singing, I would push it away. And I and and that is part of how I learned the hard way to honor who you really are, because when you don't, you're the one that suffers and it's going to come out either emotionally or physically or in your relationships. But it's you will be the one who suffers if you don't honor the true light the beauty and the magnificence that you are. And each of us has that in a whole variety of ways. So I would spend time singing and then not. And I would also get a little scared because when I sing, I'm very vulnerable. It, it comes from my heart. It comes from my soul. And you can see right through me. And so to have the strength, the inner strength to be seen in that way, there were times in my life where I just couldn't muster it up, couldn't. And then on the career side, I spent parallel, very parallel story, a lot of time uh, honing the craft of uh, marketing overall, but graphic design, communications, PR. I even had, became an expert in fundraising and event management. And I always, as you said, uh, spent a lot of time promoting everyone else. And it was very safe to be like a number two, you know, right under the CEO or right behind someone else who was out there in the front lines because you had a lot of influence, you had a lot of the fun of it, but you weren't seen, you know. And, and the focus wasn't all on you. All, not all on you. And you could, you could really accomplish a lot. And I derived a lot of satisfaction from that. And then I would say about maybe a little less than a year ago, the soul voice within me became utterly insistent. And this is part of what's happening on our planet now. And, and everyone who's with us now, whether they're live or on the replay, this is no coincidence. <laughs> you are here for a reason, for a message. But we are being called to step into our mastery, whatever that looks like for us, to step into our authentic voice. And so in the midst of doing all this client work for many clients that I had, this voice inside of me, and it wasn't just a voice when you lay in bed at night, it would intrude upon me in the middle of the day, you know, when I'm doing other work, it got very insistent. What about you? What about you, the wisdom you have, the light, the, the, the knowledge, the passion? Why are you not shining yourself to the world? So wow. who can let's just take a moment because I think a lot of people can really relate. And I know there are people in the crowd here today who are big in who they are <laughs> and have had to learn how to make that work and how to how do you keep your light shining when people are putting sunglasses on and opening their umbrellas when you enter the room <laughs> to protect themselves because and then you feel badly and you start toning yourself down yeah i know a lot can really understand the courage it takes to allow their full self to be expressed and that journey it can be a lifetime for many. The other thing I wanted to, to just point out too, 
was your honesty about the vulnerability it takes to sing. You know, this, <laughs> this goes for anybody who's sharing their craft, their art, their mastery. It takes courage for you to be vulnerable. I don't care if it's a post on Facebook or something as big as singing to a crowd with your yes, voice. That's you know, right. or anybody yeah. who writes uh, a yeah. blog post, an ebook, anytime you put your word to paper and put it out there for critique. You need to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to bring that up very quickly. And so please continue. Thank you know, you. I have a really good friend and it, it uh, several years ago, going back almost a decade, we were having a conversation while we were driving on a long trip and she confided in me. Now, this is a woman who's, you know, almost 60, uh, very accomplished lawyer, um, you know, very, um, a, very powerful career woman that she has not sung a note since she was a child because her voice was so ugly. Ah. What and does that and mean? what does ugly voice mean? Exactly. There is no such thing <laughs> as an ugly voice. And so when when I think about uh, all the people out there who who stifle who they really are, whether it's, you know, a singing voice or, you know, whether it's, you know, we all have this persona that we create and present to the world. But uh, I look at how much pain she was in and continues to be in, and that is not a path to freedom. That is not a path to empowerment. It is not a path to wholeness or joy. And so in my own journey, which continues, by the way, this, this, Finding our authentic authenticity is layer upon layer upon layer. So I'm continuing this journey as well. And, but, but I'm committed to reaching out a hand to those maybe behind me, you know, as those, those in front of me keep reaching out their hands to pull me along. So now I can do the same. And that's what my commitment is. And that's why I'm coming out with this message that there is no such thing as an ugly voice. And, and your passion, you know, my passion is bringing this message to the world and the one heart process and all these things that are unfolding and coming through me. But that's just mine to do. You know, your passion could be cooking or sewing or being the best accountant. You, whatever you, you know, feel strongly about, and really juices you, that is a major contribution. Because when you're in a place of joy and happiness, your light just shines so brightly. And you it model really that for everyone around you. And it's so key. We talk about this a lot too, about comparison. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't compare your, your joy, your light, your full expression to anybody else's. Although with social media, it's so easy to compare. Look what he or she's doing. Oh my gosh, maybe I need to be doing that, you know, and not having the deeper appreciation for just how much the fact that you love who you are and what you're doing, how that serves the world every single day. Absolutely. Just by being your light. You don't even have to do anything just by being the light that you are. And, and the world needs us now. Time yes. is up which is why things have gotten very insistent for me. And I bet for everyone out there, it's gotten a little insistent for you too, to step into who you are. Right. And so you, there you were minding your own business, zooming along in your professional career and the niggling happened. So how did you decide to step out and start really singing and really embracing your beautiful, dynamic, classical soprano voice? Mm. Well, I've had, uh, as I said, many start stops and starts with the singing. So it became simply a matter of setting a date for my next concert. And I hadn't performed in about three years and getting back up on that horse and marching myself in to learn new music and to start practicing and vocalizing. Uh, also, I've deepened my commitment that I'm actually, I spent the summer re-birthing myself, if you will. Nice. I cocooned. I kind of withdrew into myself. I spent a lot of time in contemplation. I contemplated how I was going to begin to tell my clients because they, they weren't going to be so happy. <laughs> but you know what? They actually are. Many of them have said to me, God, it's about time. 
<laughs> because you were mostly PR and mostly marketing, yeah. correct? Which, so, that's what they were expecting to get from you. And now they're getting so much more. Yeah. So I spent the summer really cocooning. I set a date for a concert and I marched myself to um, another level. Um, I have now started studying with a former Metropolitan Opera star, an international star who I'm really grateful she took me on. And that has been so challenging because I'm in this place right now where um, everything I thought I knew mm -hmm. about how to sing from my body is being disintegrated and just. What does that mean? I mean, because you were trained to sing and, and tap into your soprano yes. voice a certain way. And then what happened? Well, two things. One, I feel like a teenage boy about six months ago, <laughs> my voice just started getting bigger. And almost every time I would sing, it would feel like a different instrument. And so for those of you out there that may know voice types, I have grown into a dramatic soprano. So I will do repertoire like Verdi and even Wagner and big stuff. And I was like, yeah, not so much. But uh but there's a beauty to that and my hormones are changing. And the beauty is I've taken all this time to step into who I am and this kind of voice will not even mature for another 10 years. So wow. how lucky did I get? Wow. Yeah. I, don't, so, I don't understand. How does that happen? Because, you know, the, the sopranos I've you know followed over the years, usually their voice starts to wane as they age. How is it that your voice starts to get better. I love the heads. Like, yeah, why? it depends on so your voice. Easy. It depends on your voice type. A coloratura is a very light, high soprano, the ones that, you know, fly around like little birds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not me. <laughs> so not me. But, uh, but let me give you an example. So um, I did study with another teacher for many years. And uh, this also ties in with authenticity. It, it just crushes me how parallel this all is. So I used to sing from here up right mm -hmm. and at the time i used to think i was beautiful from here up right call that a parallel right then i moved down to my diaphragm and was using more of my body and i thought oh yeah this is it this is it well what i have just learned and ladies you're gonna love this <laughs> you sing from your womb you sing from your pelvic floor as low as you can go in your anatomy it's very feminine it's very gooey and it's taken me a little getting used to, but that is the juice. That is the fire. And that is from which, that is the place from which my voice will come and is coming. And so as I've matured in my view of myself, as I've accepted, you know, I, I, we all love ourselves. We just don't accept ourselves. So as oh, I've grown, oh, yeah. Oh. So as I've grown to, yeah, like that, as I've grown to accept more and more of who I am, the parallel is the voice is getting deeper and anchored from a place of, of the beautiful femininity that resides deep in my womb and the authenticity. And so it's, it's, it's an incredible uh, parallel. It's not lost on me. There may be a book in there somewhere because uh, the voice lessons that I'm having are shattering. Um, and I'll, I'll share with you guys uh, even last week, I my my coach was cutting me off again and again. No, start again. No, start again. No, start again. She said, you're not singing authentically. And then I laughed and then I cried. Mm. I cried for about 10 minutes ah. and I entered a new place deeper, deeper. I mean, that, how did, I mean, to be told you're not singing authentically when you're just pouring it out, thinking you're really there. <laughs> And how, you know, how does she know as your teacher that there's a deeper level that you need to go to? Wow. I agree. I feel very blessed to be working with her. And, and um, she sang on the international stage for 30 years. And so if anybody knows, she would be mm -hmm. one of them, one of the few in the world. So, and you know, yeah. Joe, Joe in comments made a really good point. He said, you, you released that hard block. And uh, Kamud said, if all the creation is a vibration, then what she says about yeah. where we sing from makes perfect sense. Well Absolutely. I love, yeah. that. I yeah. love that. So you boohooed and you went deeper. I mean, and this deeper. is just last week. So 
I mean, this is all unfolding live time right now for you. It is. And I feel very honored. And, um, you know, I feel there's there's no reason to try to pretend to be anything that I'm not. And so that was very meaningful to me. And I suspect it may help others. So that's why I'm really happy to share it. Mm, and, and Walter said, stepping into greatness combined with your voice brings enlightenment into your universe. Mm, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill says, so awesome. Moving into a new voice in a new way. Very thrilling. And here's a place where drama is preferable. <laughs> yeah, the audience had so much with their feedback and comments. Thank you. Thank you on that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, I want to know what, you know, what happens now? Do you, are you creating CDs? Where do you go to start really sharing your platform with everybody? Mm -hmm. So at the strong uh, direction of my coach, I am going into another quiet period, which is, again, very interesting because I'm really um, coming out to the world at the same time. But what's beautiful about that is that the voice is not the singing voice. It's It's this right now. It's my eyes. It's my words, my writing. In fact, I have a beautiful poem that I wrote that I designed for everyone that I would like to share with everyone here today and on the replay. So Andy can post that link. So, you know, the voice is everything that I am. And so the one piece of it is is still, um, you know, in process. Now, ironically, I gave a concert also last week and most people, I'd say 99% of people, maybe, maybe 90, can't really tell the difference. And so I still am singing. I'll still, you know, go out, but I am going to do new demos in the spring. I am going to do a concert in the spring. And my vision is to start a movement, which will be the a million voices, one heart, which will do con a concert tour wherever I'm welcome in any community, anywhere. And mm -hmm. there's a whole platform behind that about, you know, the who we really are and finding our authenticity, our joy, uncovering our own hearts, the fragrance of our own hearts, and, and sharing that musically through community style events and free concerts in the park. So this is a vision and, you know, this mm -hmm. is a three to five year plan, but I'm working toward that. And uh, in the meantime, I will sing wherever I have an opportunity. Wow. And of course, Robert Clancy says, the most beautiful voice you'll ever hear is sung by all the beauty from your own precious heart. <laughs> oh, and he says, thank you for sharing your beautiful voices with us, mm -hmm. Andy and Historia. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, some, some of us who honestly cannot carry a tune. <laughs> um <laughs> you still have a beautiful voice. I'm telling okay. you. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, but I think that vision is wonderful. I know everybody watching is going to hold that for you as well. And look, yeah. and I know I, I'm sure plenty of, of folks watching are looking forward to what that looks like and how that unfolds for you and really wishing you such joy and fulfillment. And I know that too, as you, got deeper into your voice, you felt the calling to use it for healing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So I also serve in the role of energy healer. And I use those words very consciously because I am not a healer. Healing and light come through me. And anyone that I am honored to be able to work with, uh, all I do is carry the light and then open the door and then it, they work with their soul, their higher self. So I do offer energy work and I teach and I provide, um, you know, immersion style experiences. And I, uh, I like to take people on deep meditations with blankets and pillows on the floor and then leave them there for the day. You know, <laughs> Just kidding. But I do leave them there for a little while. I usually I usually take them way out in the cosmos and then I sing to them and then they're they're gone. So, um, but I I have had um, I've been a student of the divine, my own divinity, my own essence, my whole life, mm -hmm. and so I feel also this passion to share what I've learned 
Um, and we, we teach what it is we need to learn. So I keep sharing these things and uh, people are coming along for the ride. So I do share spiritual teachings and I offer workshops and sound healing and sound immersion. And so there's, there's a whole bunch of things that, that come with this voice that I am now offering to people. Um, and there's a special New Year's event actually coming up. So Yay, maybe yes. interested in that. Can I share? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So Robert Clancy, who has this wildly popular page on Facebook, his community guide to the soul, he and I will be co-hosting a very special New Year's Eve event because for most of us who will be participating in this, this lab now or later, New Year's Eve is probably a little bit of a bust, right? We're not interested in mistletoe and where the my, mistletoe may get us. Mm -hmm. We're not interested in, you know, imbibing and getting drunk anymore. And we don't really want to watch Anderson Cooper and CNN anymore. So what is it we do? We go to the movies, we, you know, hang out with the kids. It's really boring. So coupled with this beautiful day of winter solstice, the whole time right now is a beautiful opportunity for reflection, for going within and con contemplating what it is we can leave behind and refreshing and rejuvenating our spirit and entering into a new year. So we will be co-hosting a special event called... Uh, <laughs> Renew Renewals Eve Celebration, nice. bringing in the new cheer, and we will be delivering it through Wellness Universe, Wonderful. Uh, streamed live around the world. We have made a very um, generous price point because it's about participation, mm -hmm. not making money. So it's $20, but for everyone who is on now and following later, we're offering a 50% discount. So you can spend three hours with us. We'll be doing inspiration, live music. We'll have special guests, Harrison Klein, Marbeth Dunn, Jaden Sterling, Liberty Forest. Wonderful. Robert and I will be doing some co-teaching on some, some exercises on, you know, uncovering for yourself what it is you want to leave behind and move forward into. I think you're going to put the, um, can you put the link up? Um, what the thing to do is to go to my website, Christaria.com and right on the homepage is more information about the event. And that'll take you right out to Wellness Universe and the registration. Right. And, and then and I'll put everything into the archives, everybody. Absolutely. You know, to, to worry so we're about so, it. you know, this is kind of and you know, this could be a beautiful thing that we could do from year to year. We it has so much energy. It's it's it will be inspirational, joyful, co contemplative. Uh, we want to bring everyone together in community. And then the next morning we're gonna come together again, for an hour long meditation, mm -hmm. also streamed live, and all the proceeds will go to hospice. Because nice. there's this beautiful parallel as we are all in transition, that money can go to support those that are making the ultimate transition. Wow. I love that. I love that on so many levels. And those, yeah, I, I speak to entrepreneurs a lot, Chris Daria, And I find that anytime that you can take time out from your courageous journey as a business owner and get renewed and do it in a mm. sense of community like you and Robert are offering everybody through the wellnessuniverse.com or you can go to christaria.com to learn more. This is key for you and it's key for the success of your business, whether you're a solopreneur, you have hundreds of employees mm -hmm. as a leader. And if you work for somebody as a leader, you need to reevaluate, re calibrate, renew, and rejuvenate mm -hmm. continually. And yeah. this is a wonderful opportunity. And I know you have a, a discount code that you'll be giving me to share with everybody. Is that correct? I do. Or? And it's okay. it's not something easy to remember. So no, make no, sure I'll put it in the archives, everybody. Yeah, so it'll be right here the archives. on but YouTube please, or website or wherever you watch yeah, this. Please join that. us. And, and, you know, to your point, you can we can only lead others and we can only serve others as far as we have gone. So any opportunity you get to deepen within yourself um, and peel off another layer and another layer, uh, please do so. Um, and Robert right. has some really interesting teachings that uh, yes, I'm does. finding, the, yeah, I'm finding really fascinating. And, back and wow, he wowed yeah. everybody. Yeah, hey, so we're, ha we're having a lot of fun kind of meshing everything together. And Anna from 
uh, from the Wellness Universe, put a link in here. And Anna, I will be sure to put that Wellness Universe link uh, for class renewal, Renewal's Eve celebration. Renewal's I will Eve absolutely share it everywhere I glow and certainly in all the archives for this show so people can know. We'll make sure. Okay. Thank you for that, though, really. Oh, they're so good over there at the Wellness Universe. Yeah. And I'd love uh, for people to visit my website too, because if you join my email community, there's this beautiful song that I've recorded called Salve Maria, which is the origins of it are unknown, but it's an incredible, I sing it in Spanish. It's an incredible lullaby to the Divine Mother. And um, they can get that yeah. as a free download. So please come oh, by and visit Cristaria.com too. Yay! Definitely. I love that idea. And you know, to get back to the singing, were you able to try to see if your voice could project in a comfortable way for you here in Blab? <laughs> I think if I hum, I won't hurt anyone. <laughs> so uh Money gosh, is good. We, we haven't even touched on the solstice. It's it's Oh, we're gonna get to the solstice. Don't yeah. you worry. We've got we've yeah. got time. This is an important show. Yeah. And so share some of your humming, share some of your singing and 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 but before we go there, yeah, you know, the solstice is part of what Robert and Christaria are doing. You know, this is a time of year and that provides us a beautiful opportunity to flow with the energies of the planet and go deep within leaving behind what no longer serves us, strengthening our inner light so we can be a steadfast pillar in the world together as a community as yeah. well. Yeah. And so talk to us some more about why this time is so important. Where we are right now, we're in it. This is it right now. I can feel the great energy of the winter solstice happening. Yeah, we are. All right. We're shifting gears a little bit. So let me just kind of pull my thoughts. What's really beautiful about now, the darkness and um, the cold for many of us, is that it, it mirrors nature is sleeping, the animals are sleeping in hibernation, and it mirrors greater cosmic, you know, planetary and cosmic cycles. And so going back in time before Christ, there were many rituals, many um, civilizations and um, societies completely independent of each other developed their own rituals to make sense of this time and to make sense of this energy. And so you have the Yule tradition, which um, traces very far back. You have um, you have Saturnalia, which was kind of hilarious with the Romans, and that's worth looking up. I don't want to focus on that too much, but just know that this concept of the turning within and making sense of the dark has been with us as long as we have been on this planet. So as we are in this time, it beckons us to slow down. And it beckons us to spend time going deeper. And that's really frightening for a lot of us because we don't, we don't quite know what we're always going to find. We don't quite want to feel sadness or we don't quite want to feel period. And now in our bustling, fast paced, go, 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 go. We're plugged in 24 seven. We can distract okay. ourselves. Yeah, we can distract mm -hmm. ourselves forever. So it's a beautiful built-in time to really call us out of that. And so for that, I think as a, as a uh, humanity collectively, we should be really grateful that nature continues to call us in this way because we are distancing ourselves from that very rapidly. And I don't think it's quite beneficial for us overall. So as we, um, as we bring ourselves into stillness, um, we contemplate, you know, what I like to think of it as the dark, the black velvet of all that is. And there's a great holding in the darkness. And the darkness, oh, it's always followed by a glorious dawn. And so we can also know with certainty and faith that light will return. And so this day marks, you know, for those of us who have had the dark night of the soul, or contemplation about who we really are, our authentic voice, what we want to be in the world, what we came here to do. No, we know 
that the light will always come. So to pause and to slow down and to just be with this dark energy, this velvet holding is a really exquisite opportunity not to be missed. And so that's the contemplative part of what we're all doing here today. And uh, the divine light returns, the earthly light returns. And to draw a broader parallel and go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole, Many of us are observing, uh, a dis as, as in my own life, a disintegration of all that I knew. And for many of us, this is occurring so that something new can be built. This is happening on our planet. There is a disintegration of order, of government, of financial institutions. There's a disintegration of what we have known, but not to be frightened of it. This is, this is a natural birthing similar to what I did this summer. And we've all been rebirthed many, many times in our lives, many, many times. Now, that's not to say that birthing is not painful, <laughs> but it's a very natural process that unfolds in, in its own rhythm, its own knowledge. And so if we rest within the energies of right now, we will just be carried back into the light we can be with ourselves in stillness. And for what I'd like to do with us today, I'd like to just spend a little time doing a practice to help us take one thing, just one thing that we can let go and let go right into that velvet holding and then bring it in with something new, something of light that can sustain us. All right. so, Everybody got something they want to let go of? Oh, yeah, I know you do. Yeah, And I think one thing that you've mentioned too, Chris Dari, that's so important <clears throat> is to not fight that yes. black velvet of darkness. It is yeah. really a healing opportunity. It is a shifting opportunity. Some of us are forced into the black velvet <laughs> and, um, and don't fight it. You don't go, oh, no, I don't want to yeah. be in the black velvet. I want the light. It's yeah. really a wonderful time. It's a contrast time. It's a time to find out an even deeper knowing of yourself and what you really want. Yeah. Alignment is a great word here. You know, um, to be aware and conscious enough of being aligned with our soul and our purpose. And especially now. Um, when we are not in alignment, um, things are getting very painful. So just like the poem that I wrote, which is called River, um, we're all in this big river rushing to the ocean of all that is. And there's really not even time to turn around, see who's with you, who's doing what. If someone's caught up in the brushes on the shore, there's not time to reach out for them. It's all about go, <laughs> go, go, go. But uh, I used to say that uh, the universe used to hit me over the head with a two by four. And then it used to be a slap across the face. And now I like to think of it as kind of a feather on the cheek. So if we can think about resistance <laughs> in those terms, there's, uh, you know, there's a much more graceful way to, to come back into alignment with our essence and with our hearts. And so that's what this time is all about as well. It's an opportunity to come into alignment. And, and you're right, Andy. Resistance is, what is it the Borg would say? Resistance is futile. Am I mixing my, uh, yeah, <laughs> my no, sci-fi sure. shows? Somebody help me out in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't serve because you really, it, it could be scary, but you'll be fine. Yeah. And, and it's so important. Yeah. yeah. So continue. Yeah. So would you like me to lead people through I a little meditation? Would or would you like that. me to sing? Okay. Both all do right. it all. All right. All right. So what I think I'll do is uh, I'll make it quick, but just in case people pop in and they're like, what's going on? Um, but I'll lead you all just through a quick um, um, exercise, a brief meditation, and then I'll pick up my bowl and I'll just hum to you a little a song and then I'll talk to you at the end uh, about why I chose that. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So I invite you to everyone um, present right now with us, either live or on the replay. Your energy is all being held. We're all together in one community in the oneness that is. 
And I invite all of you to sit up straight, feet on the floor, close your eyes, and then breathe through your nose. Just focus on your breath. Don't shift it. Don't try to do anything with it. Just be aware of your breath. And we lost Christaria. I thought, wow, I'm really focusing on my breath, but. <laughs> and then, but a boom, she'll be back. Keep focusing on your breath. Here she comes. Hang in there. All that great energy sort of knocked you <laughs> off the, uh, the way. So, not to be funny, but electronics can be fried. So, I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> And all right. Glazer said we all went too deep. Okay, for replay viewers, yeah, yeah. let's go back. Yeah, let's get back into our space with a little joy, a little um, the little holiday gremlins energy just visited us. <laughs> wow, that was great. <laughs> let's take a, take a deep breath and let it out with a sigh. And I want you to actually make a sound. So breathe in through your nose. <sighs> Do that one more time. <sighs> On this day, we rekindle the light within our hearts. On the darkest of nights is birthed a glorious dawn. And as the light grows once again on the earthly plane, so too it is an opportunity to grow the innate light of who we are. Allow yourself to be drawn down deeper, to be held in the dark velvet of all that is. Know that you are held, you are loved, and you are so honored for choosing to be here now. You are a great being of light. So now allow to come to the surface of your consciousness one thing could be a quality of personality you struggle with within yourself, a situation, a fear, a worry, a relationship. You already know what it is. Just allow it to rise. Do not push it away. And within this great holding and this great love, just be with the situation. You don't have to solve it. You don't have to do anything. Just be with it. Now bring your awareness to your heart. And in that place, imagine a sacred fire. It may start out very small and then grow. And I want you to set your intention upon intensifying this fire, this light, until it is encompassing all of you. Now take this situation, this concern, this fear, whatever it is, and bring it into your heart. Know that there are two chambers in our hearts, our human heart and our divine heart. Bring this item into your divine heart of unconditional love, the divinity of who you are, and allow it to merge melt, 
be transmuted, let it go. Perhaps you may feel a little bit lighter, a little freer. Just notice what may arise. Whatever comes is perfect for you. There is no right or wrong way to experience this. Now imagine yourself in the light of the sun, you're outside, it's a warm day, we've left winter, there's a breeze and all the green leaves and everything is twinkling and bright and the sky is a brilliant blue. Close your eyes and turn your face up toward the sun and open your arms, stretched out as far as you can to receive the light the brilliance, the power. Our sun continuously shines and never asks anything of us. It is always giving. Soak in that energy, that unconditional love. And now bring to mind an intention as a light returns, something new to fill that space that you have just let go of. Set an intention, just one. Now imagine it coming out from the sun, the light, it's riding on the light and it enters your body and it fills you, this light from top to bottom, this intention, this desire for whatever it is you wish as the light returns and we enter into a new year. Bask in the sun, bask in your light. Know that this is who you truly are. As you rest here a while, become aware of the beautiful harmony and balance of the light and the dark. And while they may appear to be at polar opposites, they are one. Separation is an illusion. It is the same holding, the same love, the same nurturing, the same presence. So as we sit with the stillness within, the stillness of this day, we honor the dark and we welcome the light. We hide from nothing. We welcome all in our divine heart. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes to a new day. Namaste. Wow. Namaste. So if y'all want to stay in that space, I will play a little something for you.
was so profound. Thank you, Christaria. Thank you. On behalf of those who you know, tuned in and, and are here live, and for those of you in replay, I know you have also been as profoundly affected as I have right now. What a beautiful healing. I feel like we had a group healing together around the sacred fire of the winter solstice. Thank you for sharing your beautiful words. You're welcome. Separation is an illusion. Honor the dark and welcome the light. Deborah Oakland says, thank you for the wondrous meditation. Robert Clancy, a guide to the soul, says, thank you for the beautiful stillness. Mm. Kamut says, beautiful guidance on darkness and light. Thank you. Alice Badler says, brought tears to my eyes, stunning. Life of clarity, thank you, so powerful. And it's true. And you can see, you know, through the voice, through the tone, through the singing bowl, and most importantly, through the voice of your words. You know, we were held, we were guided, we embraced our dark velvet. And then we stepped into the light. And this is a meditation we can go back to again and again. And whenever we feel the need to be renewed. Thank you so much, Christaria. Thank you. It's my deep, deep pleasure and honor. Yeah. Andy, so, I'm so, so grateful to now be part of your community. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks thank to you. everyone with us now, with us in the future. You are all held and uh, I'm really grateful. Um, Walter says, absolutely beautiful. Thank you for the clarity and embrace you have given us. Yeah, I mean, I know I feel held. Um, I feel healed. I feel renewed. And uh, this brings me to what is it that you love most about this work that you do? This moment. Yeah. Community, oneness, open hearts, mm -hmm. authentic connection with one another, and we see each other this moment. Mm -hmm. Our divine selves see the divinity in each other, the namaste of the yeah. moment. Yeah. How can folks work with you? How can folks get more of this? <laughs> Well, thank you for asking. So I will be rolling out um, early in the new year. Um, actually, Robert and I are going to be co-teaching a multi-part workshop uh, online course. We're putting it together. So watch for that. Um, again, if you sign up for um, my email list, christaria.com, or go to Robert's page on Facebook or guide to the uh, you can tap into that. And I really encourage you to join us on New Year's Eve. And also, I am going to be offering for the first time, I'll be offering one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching. And um, I'm really looking forward to putting that together. What does that look like? It looks on, like, coaching. you know, it looks like spending time with me where you share where you are, where you're headed, what's not quite working, what's stuck. And I sit with you and I sit with your situation and we spend time one-on-one. -on -one. And what happens is I always get practices, thoughts, ideas. They just come right downloaded through. And we work to unstick what might occur. We may do some crystal bowl work, some healing work. It may be coaching, maybe mentoring. Um, it may be, you know, very kindly but firmly kicking your butt. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, whatever, whatever it looks like, it is um, intimate and uh, powerful, um, and it brings me great joy to serve others in this way. And I've been doing it for a very, very long time. Um, people have been, they just come to me, uh, 
And um, so now I'm putting it together in a way that makes sense and I can serve more and more people in a meaningful way. Wonderful. So clearly you're available online virtually yeah. yep. as well. Yeah. As yeah. in person where you are. Yeah. That's wonderful. And I just have to say, you look so beautiful tonight. I just love the everything you've got glowing on right now. Thank the sparkles, you. the necklace, the almost like ornaments hanging there. They're so beautiful. You challenged me to it. And I even rolled out my curlers. <laughs> my <laughs> curlers. <laughs> but it, it would oh, seem so appropriate and I had to match your, your brilliance, Andy. You are just oh, so stunning. You. So thank last you. time we last time we got together, I think I was in sweatpants with no makeup. So this this balances us <laughs> out a little bit. <laughs> how can how can folks find you? We know that they can go to Christaria.com. Are yeah. you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? How else can yeah. folks find you? Um I am at CH Powers on Twitter. And you can find me as uh, Christaria Song, Christaria Song on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. And I love, um, as you guys know, many of you know, I love social media almost as much as you, Andy. And, and for me, the great joy um, is being in connection and community with mm -hmm. people. And so now with social media, we can do that. And so um, please find me and, and start a conversation. It would be my delight. Oh, that's great. I know we're all going to be watching you unfold over the next three to five years, right, everyone? It's oh, so get ready. Special. Oh, I'm so serious special. about this one. I'm putting everything I have into it, and it is a movement. It is a movement. It it's is. going to happen, and um, the One Heart process will come out of this, and there's there's just so many, so many visions of bringing harmony and awakening in the world so that we can see each other right. as we are seeing each other right now. Right. So. It's key. And everywhere we go, we need to bring this level of, of inner work and understanding to whatever it is we're doing, whether it's parenting, friendship, relationships, your work in the world. So as much as I'm a left brainer and love to crunch numbers and, and really I'm into strategy and business, this is a very important strategy. And I feel yeah. in this episode of Possibility Partners, we're even more deeply connected now through the grace of and the divine uh, love and guided meditation and music and beautiful voice that you brought to us today. Chris Daria, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your light with the world, because that takes courage and vulnerability to truly bring what you're bringing out to the world, and for sharing it with all who watch this, whether my audience, your audience, an innocent bystander. <laughs> <laughs> no coincidences. No coincidence. I was just thinking that there's no coincidences. <laughs> um, what a gift, what a gift, especially during this special time of year, the winter solstice and the holidays where we celebrate the gift of each other's presence. Mm. I, a true gift, of course, is for all of you who show up live as well as via replay. Christari and I are both seriously honored and deeply honored yeah. that you chose to take time to spend with us and share your delicious energy with all of us. I, I'm truly blessed to know all of you, whether it's just, not just, whether it's energetically, in person, virtually, vibrationally, it doesn't matter. It really is an honor. And I'm blessed to have that opportunity. Ah, I'm going to wrap everything up now and say my maws and wish everybody the most joyous holiday. Happy everything, right? And, uh, or marry everything and happy always, I think is the <laughs> saying that's out there that I just sleep love. Sleep in and, heavenly peace. Yeah, and sleep in heavenly peace. That, oh, we could all use that. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for having the courage to uncover your voice and be more deeply in aligned with who you really are and your willingness and courage to share that with the world. Wow, I am in such awe and wonder of you. It's time for the afterglow party. So I'm saying mwah, mwah, mwah to all. And thanks to my wonderful glowing goddess guest, the divinely delicious Christaria. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. All right. Bye, everyone. See you in the next time.